I want you to think for a moment about what you did this morning. You got up, you got dressed, maybe you went for a run. You made a decision about what to have for breakfast or not to have breakfast. You've known you were coming to this event for a while. You got tickets, you asked your friends to come along, and maybe along the way you realized you probably needed some coffee, so you asked your friends if you could make a stop at Saxby's. And now you're sitting here, wondering why I just spent the last minute talking about things you probably didn't even think twice about. Well, that's why, because you didn't even think twice. Today, I want to talk to you about how the things I just listed represent one of the greatest powers that you have. But first, I want to tell you about the time my little brother became obsessed with the movie Flushed Away and flushed everything he could find down the toilet. I mean everything. My nightgown, my toys, my mother's watch, and once even himself. We caught him one foot in the toilet bowl ready for his big adventures in the plumbing or the weeks when my brother just refused to turn left. He steals fries off of people's plates in restaurants, and he's pulled fire alarms in restaurants, in stores, and even stopped trains. That's Maxi. Maximilian Hendrik Lupa, or Maxi, is my little brother. He's exactly one year and 10 months younger than I am, and exactly half a foot taller. His favorite architect is Anthony Gaudi. He has perfect pitch. He really, I mean, really likes barbecued ribs, and he hates sounds that are too loud. Also, he has autism. When I was preparing this speech, I found myself having to go to Google to find a definition of autism. Even 18 years after his diagnosis, I still struggle to put his experience into words. But for the sake of clarity, here's what Google says that autism is. Autism, often referred to as autism spectrum disorder, is a mental condition present from early childhood, characterized by difficulty communicating, forming relationships, and using abstract concepts. It is chronic and can be treated but never cured. People with autism may experience symptoms such as inappropriate social interaction, compulsive behavior, self-harm, repetitive actions and words, sensitivity to sound or tics. This definition does not show the whole, beautiful, complex, and evolving story. This definition does not show the faces of the autism community nor those who care for them. Autism does not make someone a genius. Autism does not mean that someone is incapable of love. This definition does not show the face of my Maxi, whose favorite po composer is Stravinsky, who likes salami just a little bit too much, and to whom I've mostly only been able to communicate with by quoting Disney movies. And yes, in addition to all the funny stories I've told are the stories of tantrums, of the times he would pull my hair so hard it came out in bunches in his little hands, of the times he would just run off, leaving my mother and I frantic and terrified, wondering if we'd ever see him again. But in addition to all of those moments, are beautiful moments, moments of pure, genuine connection shared without words. What did your parents expect of you growing up? What did your teachers expect of you? What did you expect of you? Probably potty training around two or three, speaking at the same time, reading at six, homework, tests, friends, going through your awkward phase. And then, for some, expectations are grades, good grades, great grades, community service, leadership positions, sports captainships, and then getting into a good college. In my home, that was not and is not how we measure success. Growing up, my mom would often tell me, honestly, Yosha, I'm just glad you can talk. And she really meant it. In our home, markers for a successful life weren't grades or extracurriculars. They were forming full sentences and referring to oneself in the first person. Children with autism don't learn anything by themselves. They have to be taught the most basic skills over and over and over again. When Max was first diagnosed, he had a type of therapy called applied behavioral analysis, one of the few proven interventions for autism. He could spend up to 15 therapy sessions on just pointing at something and following it as it fell on the ground. Time and time and time again, his therapist would drop a toy from his high chair only for him to stare into space. My little brother had to be taught how to brush his teeth, how to shower. We discovered when he was 15 that he actually really, really loves running. Now a typical child might 
go on runs in his free time, or join the school track team. Not an option for Maxie. It's only now, four years later, that we can send him on runs on his own, and it's thanks to Apple. With Find My iPhone, we can track his movements and make sure he's not getting lost. This is huge. This is a massive development for our little boy and a huge thing for him at age 19. When I was 19, I was being peer pressured by my fellow Georgetown students to get the perfect summer internship. He's finally able to do something simple that he loves. And it's not even like he can go running when he wants to. He doesn't know how to ask. He goes running when my mom decides he probably should go on a run. Even over this simple, basic part of his life, he has no control. And I think about all the times that I whined about having to go on a run. At least I could if I wanted to. For many parents, the autism diagnosis is a gateway into a new world. The world of your child, of his or her specific characteristics, of thinking outside of the box, of tired mothers and fathers. There's no guidebook to how to be the parent of an autistic child since each case is so individualized. Maxi has a unique combination of characteristics in that he has high functioning intelligence but low functioning behavior, which made it almost impossible to find for him to sc a school to go to in the beginning. But it's only thanks to my mother, who never, ever gives up, that we were able to find one. This is Maxi at the child school in New York City's Roosevelt Island. But it doesn't end with finding a school, then comes in with staying in school. Maxie was often the sharpest in his class, but by far the worst behaved. It was hard for his intelligence to shine when he sh struggled to sit through an entire class, struggled to express things as simple as the need to go to the bathroom, and struggled to answer questions. It was hard for him to do well when most of the time all of his teachers saw was a severely misbehaved child. The experience of learning and inquiring the classroom simply has not been an option for him. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't learn and inquire. He's an exceptionally curious mind and he seeks out and drinks up information. For example, his favorite architect is Anthony Gaudi. We often find him poring over Wikipedia articles, reading everything he can about Gaudi and his works. The happiest we've ever seen our little boy was the first time he saw the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. It was like watching someone in a trance. But our society's school system does not provide an opportunity for his curiosity to shine. While campus gets riled up with recruiting and I see my fellow students go from info session to info session, dressed in business formal, all I see is my brother and his peers. Human beings with the same energy and passion as any Georgetown student but with a fraction of the opportunities. I think about recruiting. I think about job applications, GPAs, recommendations. I think about how as a senior in college, all my friends talk about is how scary the future is, how it's one big question mark. Well, you know what's actually a question mark? My brother's future. Maxi loves art. He loves music. He loves socializing. He has a great sense of humor, and he takes pride in himself when he accomplishes something new, like taking a taxi by himself, or jumping off a diving board, or buying a water bottle. But what comes next for him? College? No. A job? We wish. Where is he going to live? Who is he going to live with? At home? Forever? Will he ever get the chance to fall in love? These are questions that we don't have answer to, and it's are impossible to answer. Maxie's development isn't linear. He makes huge progress one day and then completely regresses the next. The people around me are so scared because they don't have a 10-year plan. We don't know what's gonna happen next week. So, the world isn't built for Maxie, but that doesn't mean he has nothing to offer. I want to share a quote from my mother's memoir. Turbulence, a true story of survival, which parallels her experience as a sole survivor of an airplane crash and as the mother of an autistic child. It's available on Amazon. <laughs> Quoting from the book. I don't feel that there's a real person inside Maxi screaming to get out. Maxi is real. Maybe he's not functional in the way that the world defines success. He does not meet those criteria, but those criteria are limiting in themselves. He sees the world differently, and I like how he sees it. He wakes up smiling, he goes to sleep smiling, and he enjoys a sequence of moments in between." End quote. 
So maybe Maxie exhibits behaviors that a typical teenager wouldn't. He flaps his arms and he runs around in circles. He quotes cartoons repeatedly and obsessively. He makes loud and unintelligible noises. It makes a lot of people uncomfortable. It turns people off to him. They stare, they get scared, they make judgments. It makes a lot of people see him as a lesser human being. But Maxie does all of this with the biggest smile on his face. This is Maxie being happy. This is Maxie expressing himself. This is Maxie being himself in a way that is not acceptable to society. When I go home, a typical day with my brother is not watching TV or catching up or even fighting. It's Maxie shut up in his bedroom, watching and re-watching YouTube videos again and again at maximum volume. No, it's not normal, but it's not bad. I didn't have a typical sibling experience. I didn't have anyone to play with as a child, anyone to joke with, anyone to make fun of our parents with. He was always physically there, but I could never reach out to him, not even when our family was turned upside down and we needed each other the most. I couldn't relate or contribute to the stories my friends told at school about their brothers or sisters. Usually, mentioning my brother just made people uncomfortable. But it's through Maxi the person who's supposed to be incapable of empathy, the person who's supposed to be incapable of connecting through others, it's with Maxi that I have learned what it means to be truly present in a moment with another person. When Maxi actually does look at me, and when I see him see me, nothing else in the world matters. It is pure, it is genuine, it is unconditional love. Maxi doesn't care what I wear, how many friends I have, or what job I get when this is all over. What matters to Maxi is that I'm a person and that I love him. This is a person, a person with likes and dislikes, things he wants and is are content with. He has emotions and he feels pain. He feels it when he gets judgment and he gets judgment a lot. If you look at a person with autism and fail to look past what normal people will call strange, you will miss so much. My whole life I've tried to be the happy one, the one with a positive outlook on life. But mental health is a struggle as long as life and it catches up with you at some point. The past few years, I've lost the ability to see my own value and contribution to the world. I've lost sight of what I'm moving towards and I've wanted to and almost have given up. But watching Maxie's face after he finishes a solo run, watching my mom try both to keep him safe and push him towards independence has given me new life. Every day, my mother fights for Maxie's future in a world not built for him, and it has made me determined to one day continue that, to make sure he has all the basic things that we have, a right to socialize, to exercise, to learn new things, to listen to new music, and explore his interests. These are things that Maxie does not have access to, but it makes me realize that these are things that I do have. Not only do I have options, but other people see me as having options. Everyone's willing to give me a chance. And now speaking directly to my fellow Georgetown students, everyone is willing to give you a chance. Think back to the list that I started off with. What do those things show? Your decisions, your agency. That is the power that you have that is often overlooked. A lot of times people don't understand what it's like to have a sibling with autism, and they get confused. They say, it must be so hard, I'm so sorry for you. But that's never how I've seen it. For Maxi, for us, is a gift. He's taught me about a different way to see the world. He's taught me how to take advantage of what I do have and make the most of it. I want to tell everyone, at all my fellow students at Georgetown this. I'm sure you all have aspirations and goals of what you're gonna do post Georgetown. Scale those down for a second. I want you to become aware of your ta little talents, your little freedoms, your heart, the things, your love and your heart and your aspirations and what you can do with your life. Become aware and love yourself. You can do so much in this world just by virtue of the fact that everyone sees you as a person who has the right to make a life for yourself. These are the opportunities that you have access to at any moment and that don't require a cover letter. We're always scared. We're scared for the future and we're scared for Maxi. 
It's scary to let him do things on his own, knowing the reactions he gets from the public, ranging from judgmental to downright dangerous. But what's more important than our fear for him is him. What's more important is Maxi, his joy, his talents, his love of running, and his, ex his extraordinary curiosity. And what's more important than your fear of what your future holds, what's more important than worrying about whether you'll get the right job or do all the things that a Georgetown graduate's supposed to do, what's more important is you, your agency, your freedom. The future is scary, but it's yours. Fighting for chances is always more important than fearing the odds. Thank you.